Welcome to this week's vlogging video. Today's video is all about exactly what you should be doing the first year of your blog. I am very opinionated about this and there's so many things that people do that I'm like, why are you spending your time doing that? That is not gonna help you in the future. That is not gonna help you make money, get more page views, etc. So I'm gonna turn off my messages so that you don't hear that all video long, but let's get into everything that you should do the first year of starting your blog. Okay, starting off with a super quick background on just who I am and why I'm even talking about this. So I have the blog by Sophia Lee, started when I was 19 years old. I'm now 26, which is literally insane. And in the last six years, I have built my blog from being in my dorm room and literally doing it on my own to now being a seven figure business. And we have a team of nine of us, which is literally insane. And I've learned so much through the last six years of having this blog um, and things that I wish I would have known. So these are all the things that I wish I would have known if I was restarting my blog right now. My first tip for you is one that I'm very opinionated about, and that is that you should be spending the absolute least amount of money as possible. So many people are trying to sell you products and are trying to upsell you on things that you simply do not need. Before you go spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on your blog, you need to make sure that you're actually going to stick with it, which I know that when you're starting it, your intentions are high and you're like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna stick through with it. It is so much harder than people think and a lot of people end up wasting money. So there are three things specifically that I think are worth it to spend money and there's a way to do those three things in the least amount of money as possible. So first thing is hosting. You wanna have a self-hosted WordPress blog. You do not want a hosted WordPress blog. So the difference between a self-hosted and a hosted, I'm gonna make this as simple and fast as possible, is that a self-hosted blog is one that you own. And then a, so like that's like you owning your house where a hosted blog is like you renting an apartment. So for example, um, uh, Squarespace, if your like website is like by Sophia Lee dot Squarespace dot com, that's a hosted website. You're just renting space from them. You don't actually own that where you want a self hosted one that you actually own. So the way that I recommend doing it the cheapest and what I did and what I would still do to this day if I was starting a new website is getting a Bluehost self hosted blog. I will have a link in the description of this on exactly how to set it up. I have things that you should like they try to upsell you too. So I in that blog post have things that you should like click on. Um, and upcharge and then things that you should not and are absolutely not worth it. Um, and it also gives like list by list questions, which my eyes so itchy, <laughs> which for me personally, like I am a much more direction follower than I can't just like do things listening out loud as much. So get a Bluehost website. The Bluehost is like the Walmart version of hosting. It's like the cheapest, um, basic brand, but they're really, really good. And then once my blog was getting enough views and I was making a lot of money, I switched to then Big Scoots. But now because I switched, I pay thousands of dollars a month where yes, the hosting is obviously better than Bluehost because like Bluehost was what, like $7 a month or just like something insane like that, $4 a month. I don't know, something in like so, so different than what I'm paying right now, but now I'm making a lot more money, so that makes sense. All right, number two that you should be spending money on is a website theme. We're in a day and age where, for better or for worse, people judge by the way something looks. The easiest way to get a good looking website is to get a website theme. The best place, in my opinion, to get an inexpensive website theme is on Etsy. You're just gonna Google WordPress themes. Um, and so many different options at so many different price ranges come up. There'll be some for $5. Well, of course, there will also be some for hundreds of dollars. So you can find whatever is most comfortable in your budget. I would highly not recommend you going to a private website designer. I did not even start getting my website custom design until I was four years in and I was making like $75,000 a year on my, or $75,000 a month on my blog. So I went for those whole entire time of growing my blog. I just had a purchase theme from, I found it on Etsy actually. And then that led me to the company. Um, she like had her Etsy store and then like a standalone store. But anyways, I found it off of Etsy and that's what I recommend you doing as well. 
The third thing is to invest in a course. Now there are so many different price ranges in courses. I'm sure you could find some that are like $50, $25. I don't even know, free. Like there's so many of, and then, <laughs> I'm like all over the place. Okay, and then they of course get so much more expensive. Um, I have spent thousands of dollars on taking a course. And I am a huge course proponent because you can learn something in four weeks versus trying to learn it for a year and a half. And so by spending a little bit of money, you get so much of your time back in a system that actually works, which is why I'm such a proponent of it but it obviously can get really expensive, but again, you can find like different things. So it's kind of finding a sweet spot of what you're comfortable with spending. Slightly plug, but again, do your research. There are so many good courses out there, so I'm not just saying you have to go with my course, of course. Of course, uh -huh. that was kind of a pun that I didn't, <laughs> that I didn't anticipate. Um, our courses are around like that, um, it's like in the early, like too early, it's in the beginning stage of that hundreds numbers um we're actually raising our prices right now but the courses are so so good but again like if you can afford that that's amazing our courses are incredible read the comments in the youtube videos but there are so much cheaper courses and then there also is so so much more extensive courses so there's a lot that you can do but those are the three things a self-hosted wordpress blog a theme for your website so that it looks good and then a course no brainers for me and what you should be spending money on do not spend your money on anything else. The next thing that I think you should be doing your first year is to have a focus, and that is the only thing you are focused on doing that year. For me, I've set like a focus point every single year of my blog, and it has been so helpful, and I have the mindset in that focus that I literally don't care about anything else. The first year for me, it was page views. I would recommend that same thing only focus on getting page views. Do not do anything that will not get you page views. For example, do not write a long about page. No one is going to be able to randomly come up on your about page and you are not gonna get a lot of page views on that. That's just like the fact about it. What will get you a lot of page views is you getting on Pinterest. Um, getting on Pinterest is the only social media that I started with for the first three years of my blog, I did not have any other social media. And being so focused on just that, I was able to get into an ad agency within the first year and an ad agency is going to be the first thing that you will really be able to start making money on your blog. Hence why getting page views is so important. So moral of all of that, get on Pinterest. It is the only social media that is specifically geared towards getting people to your website. Next one is a huge one. You have to pick something that you're actually interested in. You are going to be writing about it so, so, so much. It's all fun and games when you're watching all these videos, when you're getting motivated and you're getting really excited about it and you see someone that's making a lot of money. Like, look at my dog. I see so many people who watch videos or take courses or see someone on Instagram or whatever it is and get so motivated and they see what they're talking about and how much money they're making from it and they're like, okay, well like, yeah, like maybe I don't love finance, but it's fine. Like that person's making so much money that I can make myself like finance so I can write a blog on it. No, you will absolutely hate your life. You will never stick through with it. You will be writing about it for so many years that you really, really, really need to find something that you're passionate about. That is like so important. Set a schedule and a routine for yourself. So when I first started, I treated like my blog, I treated my blog like a business from the very beginning. That was my mindset. It was not just a hobby, it was a business. I treated it like that and I put time aside for it like it was a business. So for me, I was a college student, I was taking so many credits um, and I had to be really cognizant of my time and realistic with my time. So I personally, the first year of my blog could handle writing two blog posts a week. Those were two really good blog posts. They were SEO oriented. They would get all of their social media. So like all of their Pinterest pins done and scheduled for it. Um, and that's what I could handle. I really could not handle anymore. And anytime I would think I could handle more, I would end up not being able to, and then I would feel like I'm not getting enough done, and then I would get frustrated, and then I would like wanna give up, and it was just bad news. So, set a schedule, 
be consistent with that schedule and be realistic with it. Next, think about ROI. I did not know what ROI meant when I first started my blog and then I learned about it and it changed my entire mindset on how I do everything. So ROI is return on investment. Um, I would not do anything the first year of my blog that would not eventually make me money. Um, so for example, the page views, when I focused so much on page views, I did that because I knew that getting into that ad agency was going to be the first way that I really started making money. The only way you get into ad agencies is if you have a certain number of page views. So you can kind of see how that like played together. Um, I did not do things that were not going to make me money right away. For example, I did not start on Instagram right away because I knew how much time it takes, time and energy it takes to have an Instagram. And I knew that like I would not make money from that as fast as I would by getting into an ad agency. So think about ROI and don't do anything that doesn't give you a return on your investment. This is such a huge one and I wish I could like shout this from the tallest building. I don't know. Um, blogging is not a fast game. It is a really, really long game actually. Not as long as some other businesses take, but you will not see probably any momentum for the first eight to 12 months. And I know that doesn't seem like a lot of time when you say it out loud, but when you are grinding and when you are spending all of your free time and when people in your personal life are making fun of you and being like, what are you doing? You're starting a blog. Like blogs aren't even a thing anymore. Like blah, 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 blah. You will want to give up so many times and it's extra hard not to give up when nothing's happening on your blog and you don't have anything that you can be like, it is working. Like, this is why I'm doing it, you know, whatever. Um, so hold out. I mean, it's literally like at least 12 months. One of my biggest pet peeves is we have, um, like a Facebook group with our blogging courses and they're so active and they're so amazing. But every once in a while, someone will say something like, I've been doing Sophia's strategy for six weeks. Like why has nothing happened? Oh my gosh, it takes so much longer than six weeks. So much longer. Like Google not even starting paying attention to you and your content for six months. And then they take another three months and I'm just pulling random months out of my butt. So who knows, like there's, this isn't actually the timeline, but it is similar where like then once Google starts looking at your stuff, then they take another six months to even make sure that your stuff is good. Like it is such a slow game and it's really unrealistic and like, frustrating to see people who think things are going to happen within a month, six weeks, two weeks, like whatever it is. It's going to take a really long time. But once you start getting traction, you get traction really, really, really fast, which is like the best. And lastly, set goals. And I set short-term goals and then I also set long-term goals. My first year, my short-term goal, my short-term goal was to do two blog posts a week and get them on Pinterest. That was the only goal that I had. My long-term goal was to get into an ad agency, which took me like a year, year and a half to get into. Um, and then obviously I had like certain money goals. Like my first goal was to make $500 and then my next goal was to make a thousand. And then it just keep, kept rising and kept rising, kept rising. And now my goal is multiple seven figures. So like, it's crazy how fast it goes. Um, but I just, this was another thing in the Facebook group and I could do a whole video on this. Blogging is not dead and it is really crazy to people who say that blogging is dead. Don't understand how it works. When you Google something, it 99% of the time takes you to a blog. When you Google, how long should I cook chicken breasts for? That is going to take you to a blog that is answering that question. That is how the world works and the marketing engine that can be behind your, or behind your business with your blog is literally ginormous. I would not have any of my businesses if it was not for my blog. And really thinking of your blog as a marketing engine will just absolutely like skyrocket your career. And I could not speak highly enough about starting one, but be realistic with it. It's not as easy and as fun as people think it is, but it really is so rewarding. And like I said, it can just help grow your career so much faster. 
So that was today's video. I really hope you liked it. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. I do blogging videos every single week. I try to really be blunt. I'm not a, I don't like to, I don't like to beat around the bush. I'm very blunt and I'm very honest and realistic about what you need to expect. Um, so make sure to subscribe and then also join our email list. Check out our courses. I know it's like self promo, but honestly, like our courses, I made them with every time I wrote anything in the course, I was like, what would I want to know? What do I wish I had? Um, if I was doing this over again, what would I do? Like, what do I do now? Um, we really try to make it the absolute best course out there. And I think you can tell from the comments just how valuable these courses really are to people. So I hope you like this video and I will see you at next week's vlogging video.